Yeah. When we were all the universities in, invited to join the IAF and Plus project, we asked ourselves the question, um, in what way can we contribute to something special? Um, contribute to something special beyond the provision of data. Um, and um, what, we, what we came up with, of course, in, in dialogue with people who had been working with IA for many years, was that um, we could uh, possibly contribute with um, a broadening of the user group. Um, the users, which, which normally are, are defined as professional researchers. And this is where this concept of uh, public and community archaeology came in. Um, and um, yeah, I'll jump over this one for now. We come back to it later. Uh, I picked this directly from um, the work package description, the work package that I will focus on, maybe the pilot work package 16.5. I uh, have the plus for public community archaeology, which aims at including members of the public producing finds, so people active within archaeology, um, and what I've called amateur researchers, because these people, as I will explain later on, do not only produce finds, they also work with these finds and have research questions to these finds, even though they're not employed at uh, scientific institutions. We also want to, or hereby, we want to demonstrate the value of IATMA Plus for this broader user group of non professional archaeologists. We want to engender a sense of shared ownership in the past, and we want to do these, these are big words, big words which you use normally in applications um, democratize heritage management. Um, of course, it is these words that have to be catered against reality throughout the project, and we'll see how that uh, pans out. However, we have some concrete plans as to how to achieve these, uh, these goals, and uh, the key terms here are, are citizen science and crowdsourcing, um, public finders, and of course, harvesting data from national data repositories. And I'll uh, come back to that uh, again later as well. Uh, and of course, we need to facilitate uh, the harvesting of these data. Um, the user group that we are focusing on is metal detector users, or detectorists as they refer to themselves, uh, which are a very broad group of people with different motivations and different ob objectives as to why they interact with heritage, with archaeology, spanning from those who just want to strike gold to those who have a genuine historical interest, a cultural historical interest in uh, in their artifacts and in, um, in 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 the background of the, uh, the objects uh, they produce and, and the sites they discover. Um, and of course, metal detecting is a sensitive issue. Uh, there's a parallel session going on right now about about heritage theft and how we can use a digital method to to uh, to to track down um, objects that are being traded uh, across borders, uh, illicit, illicit trade. Um, and I want to go into details here because we only have these, these five minutes. I just want to say that we acknowledge these various problems that are within uh, public archaeology and especially uh, metal detector, uh, amateur archaeology throughout Europe. Uh, and I need to emphasize that uh, in the IATA project, we're of course only work with fine steaming from uh, areas, from regions and countries that have um, a permissive uh, legal policy towards uh, non-professional metal detectors. Um, and one of the contexts is where I come from, and that is Denmark, um, where metal detectorists for the last 30 years have gone through this yeah, perceived development in a way from devils uh, plundering cultural heritage to culture heroes, really. Um, the culture hero, uh, which is perfectly exemplified with this image here to the right, where a finder in 2001 presents his discovery of a gold-bracted horde to Her Majesty the Queen. Not that she's, 
it's one of these un unofficial images where, where she's holding a cigarette. Um, <laughs> Um, and in Denmark, as in other countries, like in England, for example, and Wales, um, uh, the, the official heritage sector has entered a very cooperative, a very fruitful cooperation with many metal detectorists who hand over their finds for recording in uh, recording schemes, like, for example, the uh, Portable Antiquities Scheme, the PASS, uh, or in Denmark, the many local museums across Denmark. Um, and it's these finds that have been recorded in or under these permissive uh, uh, schemes in uh, Denmark and England that have enabled archaeologists to produce maps like this, uh, the distribution of 10th, 10th, 10th century uh, yellow type brooches showing the extent of um, the, the Danish area of influence, you can say, um, uh, across modern national borders, which is very much at the core of the Ayatna project as well. <clears throat> what is characteristic for uh, metal detectors both in England and in, in Denmark, and here are examples of Facebook maps from, from uh, metal detectors groups um, in both England and Denmark. What is characteristic for them is that many of them strive towards gaining knowledge of the finds they produce. And the, the most stereotype um, uh, question posed in these Facebook fora is, please give me an ID for this coin or this fragment of a brooch or, or whatever. So it's not only that it's finding stuff that has commercial value, it's about finding uh, artifacts that have historical value that tell stories and people are or many of these detectorists are interested in the stories behind the artifacts and want to learn more about these artifacts. Um, the project that is at, at uh, the core of our engagement with metal detectorists at Aarhus University is the DIME project, DIME stands for Digital Metal Detector Finds and is a, uh, an online recording scheme um, working both on a desktop version um, and uh, as, a, as a mobile phone application. And at this point, I, I have to show you this image uh, of Peter Jensen, who I would have preferred to, to speak to today, but he's on paternity leave. It's Peter who has developed the DIME system. Um, and um, he's, however, on paternity leave, and it's a holy sacrilege uh, in Scandinavian countries uh, to, to not spend your paternity leave, as you all know, so he couldn't be here. Um, <clears throat> so I'm more representing him. Um, as I said, the DIME system works both on a desktop uh, user phase and a mobile phone application where users in the field can record um, the basic data that are important for archaeologists or important for the usage of these artifacts later on, for this uh, location by GPS. Um, <clears throat> and they can also um, yeah, do a basic recording of the artifact according to a fixed specification system, according to a list of certain materials and so on. Um, and their recording results in uh, this um, yeah, data sheet, as you could call it, which looks quite complex, and I want to go into details here, because this is only what you see as a finder of an artifact or as a museum um, employee having, um, uh, having access to these artifacts. What you see as a, as a normal user, if you, if you visit the DIME portal and search for specific artifacts is this. Um, here, an entry uh, on top, for example, of a Carolingian coin um, from the 9th century, where we see one of, uh, yeah, a record of uh, a more proficient user who knows what he is talking about. Uh, he has been able to identify this coin very exactly, uh, both in terms of date, in terms of uh, coinage, um, and in terms of uh, mint. Um, the other uh, output format is, of course, that you can query uh, for certain find categories. Here I've queried for English spellings. 
I could limit down the query to region to certain date, um, but we have to jump over that at this point. Um, and with just a few clicks, I can produce distribution maps of, of certain brooch types, like these 11th century Ernest brooches, just as an example. Um, so, even though the system has only been running for, or has been running since September 2018, we can already use the data from a bit more half year that's been going on to produce a meaningful distribution maps. So we're starting to get there where these distribution maps uh, become meaningful. Yeah, as I said, the, the system started um, in 20th of September 2018. Um, just to give you an idea of the scale of metal detecting in Denmark, um, during this period, uh, a total of 24,000 fines have been registered in the system. Um, and more than 1,200 users have registered themselves, active users um, who provide data in the system. Um, and of these, and this is of course always important, uh, 700 have actually uploaded fines. Many users have just registered themselves uh, but have not uploaded um, more than one article. Um, the DIME project is very closely related, it's not similar, but it's very closely related to other schemes working along um, the same principle. Um, well known is the Portable Antiquity Scheme for England and Wales, run by the British Museum. Um, a younger um, um, system is the Portable Antiquities of the Netherlands that started also a year and a half ago. Um, and while the Port of Antiquity Scheme that started in 1906 has this network of fines, leads, or officers um, producing most of the records within the system, although they already are uh, inviting detectorists to upload their data um, themselves as well. Um, the Portable Antiquities of the Netherlands is following the same principle as DIME, um, handing over responsibility for the provision of the first the initial recording to the finders themselves, to the detectorists in the field. And with other schemes, um, the Media in Flanders and the uh, Suart project in Finland, which is still under development, we together constitute what we call the, the European Public Finance Recording Network. Sorry for this strange name, but this is the best solution we could come up with. Um, and um, we are supporting each other and, and uh, exchanging ideas and, and uh, developments um, in order to, to realize uh, not least the, the potential of metal detection finds and metal detector archaeology as a means of giving people, giving ordinary people, the general public, access to archaeology and heritage, and not just passive access as communal, as, as uh, consumers, but access as active contributors to uh, heritage and archaeology. And this is one of the main motivating factors for many of these people we have learned the wish to not be merely a consumer of expert narratives of archaeology but the desire to contribute to be active to have hands-on relation to archaeology this is what is key to these people and this is i think why these people also constitute a resource and something that is is worth uh, including in the IAPNA project because IAPNA has um, an international um, portal providing access to finds across 
uh, modern national borders will constitute um, a huge compendium of artifacts which can be used by these people in order to learn about these finds, in order to search for parallels for certain coins, for certain brooch types, um, in a way that is that is unparalleled um, today. And I'm sure that many of these people, if we are able to communicate the, the virtue of, of Ayalpa Plus to these people, this is uh, one of the objectives of um, our um, our work package 65. Uh, they will use it. Um, I finish with some more specific challenges that we, of course, have to have to tackle, and that is the the um, facilitate. Uh, yeah, how how we facilitate getting these data into the IATNA portal. Um, so, um, and there we of course have these these three main categories: what, when, and where. Where we will use the uh, Getty AAT. Julian was uh, referring to this earlier today and said I would possibly go into the details of it. I can't do that now, um, but it's obvious that we will have to develop. Um, an extension to the existing system in order to feed these data, which are very varied into the system. When it comes to the when, it's more unproblematic, and the same is the case for um, the, the actual, uh, uh, yeah, the where, the, the geographical position of these items. Um, but by including not only um, public finds, but also, this is important, public finders. I think that we can develop IATNA um, and give it a new dimension. Um, not only that, I think we can also implement a new approach to the way archaeology is traditionally done. Where you normally see this linear progression uh, from discovery to recording to curation to research being done by experts where at the very end of it the public is involved. Um, what we're trying to do with our national recording schemes and what we hope to be able to uh, bring into the IATNA Plus is uh, a, a, a new rethinking of this process and doing it more as a circle um, involving both, sci both scientists, experts and the public into the entire process of looking at it in a more circular way. This is what I wanted to say.